Hello, hello, everyone. Hey, 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 everybody. All right, I'm going to give y'all a minute. Let y'all come on in here. Let y'all come on in here. I'm early today because we have, we are on our consecration this week and I forgot that we have prayer at seven o'clock. So I got to get in here early, get these questions and answers done. Hey, y'all. Hey, Rupinda. Hey, Destiny. Hey, Elisa, CSL. Hey, Max Potential, Kings and Queen Coaching. Hey, y'all. Do me a huge favor. Y'all make sure y'all hit that like button as y'all coming in. Police, police, police. Hey, y'all. Let me get my glasses on so I can see. Marilyn, Lizzie, Black Butterfly, Nancy Franklin. Hey. Let me see. There we go. Got my eyes on so I can see now. Jeanette, Jenna, Nancy, Destiny. Okay. Goddess Ari. Okay. I see. Hey, Linda. I see y'all coming in. Thank y'all so much. We gonna get started here in just a minute. Hey, hey, everybody. Let's see. Hey, Terry, Tina, Sally, E. Cunningham. Hey, y'all. Hey, everybody. Hey, y'all. Hey, hey, hey. Y'all do me a huge favor. When we, as we say, hey, Cluster V Free Karen. Yeah. Hey, y'all make sure y'all check her out. Hey, Billy, uh, is it, Bill, is it uh, Billy Jana? Hey, Dryson, Carmen, Miss Queen Mulatto. Carla, Jacqueline. Okay, I see y'all coming in on my Facebook too. Hey, Sally. Yeah. Hey, Kayla. Hey, Lanise. Christina's in the house. Good to see you, Kayla. Gina. Oh, boy. Y'all listen, uh, let's see. Okay. So when we get our, uh, let's see, we're going to get started on our question. Hey, Gary. Hey, Vanessa Marie. Paula St. Martin is in the house. Hello, my girl down in the bayou. Hello, hello, hello. I got to call you, Paula. We need to talk. We need to talk, girl. Hey, uh, Queek, is it Queek Queen Lachey? Hello. Hey, TL. Yes, we do. We need to catch up. Absolutely. I've been thinking about you. I was like, I got to call Paula. Um, See how, hey, Fa. Fa Stubbs is in the house. Thank you so much. Yes, we got to catch up, girl. Yes, indeed. Y'all, listen. Um. Okay, so in our Q&A tonight, I want y'all to get your questions. Make sure y'all invite some folks in. Got to Let me just let you know, when we are doing the Q&A, I need you to put a Q in front of your comment, okay? Put a Q in front of your comment so I know it's a question, okay? That's, that's all I'm asking. Just put a Q in front of it. And we're going to go as, as uh, probably about an hour, a uh, little, little bit more tonight. I'm going to try to get in as many questions as I can um, in that time frame because I have we're on consecration. And so we have to be back at church tonight. Uh, let's see. Hey, Elisa. OK, Elisa got the first question. Hold on. Hey, Tim. Tim's in the house tonight. 
Hey, Kayla. Hey, Lachey. Andrea Taylor, Shelby. I see y'all. Miss Leo Goddess. Okay. Elisa says, family narcissists seem to be, uh, uh, let's see, seem to be the firstborn. Is that possible? Um, it could be, but sometimes it's the, uh, sometimes it's the babies because the parents spoil them. So it just depends on, you know, uh, what the family dynamic was, but it can be. I know um, narcissist number one that I dealt with. I don't think his dad was the firstborn. I think his, uh, um, I think he might've been maybe second or third in line. Yeah. Max Potential says, I have gotten a word from my sister that the narcissist contacted her and asked her a question. Is that the, uh, yes, uh-huh. That's called a Hoover by proxy, uh, Max Potential. That's called a Hoover by proxy when they do it uh, through someone else other than you. Because they don't want, they don't want to, uh, they're scared of rejection, but that's called a Hoover by proxy. So, yeah. Sally says, uh, how many uh, how many grade A supplies can a narcissist have in his life? It I, As many as he can handle. Usually they don't have uh, at one time. Are you talking about at one time or you talking about in a lifetime? E. Cunningham. E. Cunningham, the drink. Um, I want you to go to Pink Girl Teachers Channel or Pastor Kevin L.A. Ewing. They have some powerful content on dreams. OK. Lenise says uh, she says, how can I stop my narcissist, my narcissist, my uh, son, narcissist, baby mama from harassing and slandering me on Facebook? She harassing you and slandering you on Facebook? You know, narcs are relentless. They really are. But you, there's no way you're going to be able to stop her from doing it. Because, you know, the smear campaign, you just can't participate in it. You almost have to act like you don't see it. Because what she wants is a reaction from you. Don't give it to her. Okay? Usually when you just leave it alone and you don't, you don't give them a reaction, they'll usually cool down on their own. Because they're looking for a reaction and you won't give them any attention. You know? So that's how you handle that. Darrell says, why? Why do they reach out six months plus down the line? I went no contact and was via email. I blocked the email. Oh, because they won't back in. A narcissist always want to come back. You know, if you were good supply, they going to, it, it might be six months down the line. It's going to be six more after that. If you break no contact, that's the way they do it. You know, they're going to always come back in Hoover if you were good supply and they think that they may be able to get back. They're going to come back. They're going to try. Queen Aaliyah says, why do so many people die due to narcissism? It's shocking. What happened to them spiritually when empaths self-destruct and get that low due to the abuse? I don't know if they're dying. Uh, are they dying due to narcissism? They might be oh, uh, to the abuse, maybe. Because abusive situations will take you down, unfortunately. Y'all make sure y'all hit the like button, okay? So we can get as many people in here as possible to get their questions answered. Make sure you put a cue in front of your question, because if you don't, I won't know it's a question. Um. I don't know, uh, the, spiritually, when the empath self-destructs and get that low due to the abuse. Narcissists, they, I mean, they're spiritually like devoid because what they're dealing with is dark, malevolent forces. So, I mean, you know, they have a spirit, but what they're being controlled by is dark. So whatever whatever happens to them spiritually, it's, it's not going to be good because they already have occupants occupancy by dark forces in their soul. Uh, Miss Queen Mulatto says he moved out today. Oh, praise God. We are both uh, educators at the same school. He used 
the one uh, man that he knows I messed around with while we were on a breakup to help him move. Oh, he did. That is creepy. Girl, he might be trying to get at him myself. I said it because these narcs are they be they they go all kinds of different ways. OK. Laura Paisley said, um, delete your Facebook account. She probably don't want to do that. He might want him. You know, narcissists are trisexual. They try anything. Mm -hmm. Jennifer, I don't know about that one. Jennifer says, why did my ex-narcissist offer to send gifts to my new baby with my fiance? Just to mess with you. Try to get a conversation with you. That's why. Because they that that's if you if you answer that or you allow that narcissist to send that that gift, that's gonna open the door. Don't do it. Tell them to keep their gifts. Don't don't take anything from them. You don't need anything from them. That's just a way for them to try to get back in and have a conversation with you, uh, and tear up your new situation. Don't do it. What would you suggest to notify your narcissist family? You're not questioning their love. You're questioning their loyalty. Example, I get around my mother. I am just dropping things fast, heartbeat. What would you suggest to notify your narcissist family that you are not questioning their love? You're questioning their loyalty. Narcissistic family members don't care about love or loyalty. Only, but the only way, the only reason they care about it is towards them but they don't care about it towards you. Not real narcissistic families. They don't care about it towards you. So you can suggest that or you can try to have a conversation with them. It's probably not going to go anywhere because they don't care what you think and they don't care what you say, right? They don't care. It, it doesn't matter. You know, it only matters when they need to get something from you and that's it. Okay. So if you're around her dropping things, it's probably because your nerves are on edge. You know, why did my ex-narcissist offer to send gifts? Oh, okay. Y'all only put the question in there one time, okay? Please. Fa says, why do they continue triangulation and smear campaigns months and years after you've left for good to uh to get your attention? Because you know what? They they um they they uh, hoover through smear campaigns and triangulation. Remember when I talked to y'all about the uh, reverse hoover? Remember that? When I talked to y'all about the reverse hoover, because the reverse hoover, what happens is with that, um, they have a, um, with the reverse hoover, they will do things to make you reach out to them. That's how they, that's why they'll do that. It doesn't matter. Because if you were considered grade A supply, they're going to do things to try to, you know, to get you to respond and react to them. So that's how they do that. Let me see. Y'all make sure y'all continue to hit the like button, okay? Okay, let's see. All right. So let's see where we're going. Where we're going. Okay. So let's see. Where was the uh, next question? Okay. So the new supply, the new supply is trying to slander me on her Facebook uh, because the narcissist has lied to the new supply and told him all types of lies about you. That's why they will do that. And the new supply don't know anything about you, but don't say anything to the new supply because she don't, she don't know that she going to be next. She going to be next. Okay. Because that narc going to get her too. Yeah, it is. Going to get her too. Okay. Because they don't. Mm -mm. That narcissist is going to get her too. Trust and believe. Y'all make sure y'all uh, continue to hit the like button. Okay. That narcissist is going to get her too. So I hope she don't think she's doing something big. Uh, Let's see. She says, my ex-narc is dating someone who resembles me. I'm not surprised. 
Remember I told y'all that the narcissist, when they get the new supply, they try to turn the new supply into you. Dye, you know, they might color their hair like you, cut their hair like you, you know, all of that. They, they try to do all of that. Thank you, Vanessa Marie. Thank you, sis. She said, put a A. Uh huh. Put uh put a, a Q in front of your questions. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you, y'all. I appreciate you, sis. Um, <laughs> y'all laughing. Uh Dimitri. Uh, Demetrius. Why are they so insecure? She claims I I ball other women every single uh time we're out on dates. Hmm. Well, a narcissist is insecure because they're not connected to their true selves and they have low self-esteem. Low self-esteem is going to auto automatically make you insecure, unfortunately. It's just one of those things that happen. Um, but she's she's very insecure because she's not connected to her true self. She don't even know who she is for real, for real. So that narcissists are notorious for that. They are they're very very insecure. They have low self esteem, low self worth, all of that. Yeah, so that's that's a problem with them. And they're not going to be secure until they heal, and they won't go to therapy long enough to heal. You know what I'm saying? So they won't. Um, if there is a such thing as healing for a narcissist, Jennifer says, why did my ex, uh, narcissist offer to, oh, okay. Y'all please just make sure you put the question in there one time. Okay. Please, please, please. Um, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, Miss Leo Goddess, she says, why are narcissists, uh, why narcissists don't stay away? I'm relocating to another state to get away from my ex narcissist. Oh, wait a minute. You relocated to another state and the narc is following you to the next state. They always want to keep you as supply. Remember y'all narcissists collect people. That's what they do. You know what I'm saying? They collect people. They want people. OK, that's what they want. Narcissists want to always have a harem of supply that they can go back to always. So they he's not going to stay away. They're not going to stay away. If they feel like they have an opportunity to come back, they're going to come back. If they feel like that door has not been completely closed, they will come back. Um, let's see. Why do they have to spread lies about you? to your family and keep calling saying his heart uh his heart is his uh is heart he crying oh in his heart he's crying because you know what narcissists are um you know they 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 live a life of duality right so once he's blacklisted you right cuz he's calling your family uh, spreading lies about you He's going to do that because he'll never see you the same, but he's going to lie to you. It's the most backwards thing that you could ever think of. Why would he call your family, tell them lies about you and then turn around and call you? It's that's the dumbest thing ever, right? You would think that that's, that's crazy. Like, why would you do that? That's crazy. But the reason that they do it is because they're double-minded and they're confused. And they're not connected. The only thing that a narcissist is working off of is ego. And you got to remember, they don't have empathy, right? So whatever they do, they feel like you deserve it. You know, if you did them wrong, they're going to continue to try to get you back. So that's why he's spreading lies to, to your family about you. Um, spreading lies about you to the uh to the family uh yeah so he it might be your family it might be his family but they gonna do that smear campaign and then he gonna turn around and try to get you back because what he'll do is if you um if you say well why are you lying you know you told them this and you told them that you if you say that and then the narcissist will tell you this well i didn't say that they'll gaslight you gaslight the mess out of you and then you can have somebody standing right there saying no that is not true they did say this and they did say that and the narcissist say i didn't say that that's what they'll do 
That's why you can't play those games with them. You don't go back and forth with them. Rebecca says, how do you break uh, the spiritual warfare of the narcissist and break the trauma bond forever? Um, we were talking about this last time, the word of God, fasting and prayer. That's what's going to help you. And you can go into, um, you can go and, and you can also seek deliverance through a deliverance counselor, a deliverance minister, but that's how you're going to break it. Because remember, when you're uprooting one system, right, you got to completely uproot that system. But then you got to institute something new, because if you don't, the enemy is going to try to remain there. OK, he's going to try to remain there. The enemy doesn't play fair. He doesn't. So he wants to remain in your life. And if he if the only way that he can do that is to keep you in dysfunctional relationships, that's what he's going to do. But the enemy wants to stay in that place. So in order to uproot that thing, you got to uproot that system. You got to get rid of it. You know what I'm saying? You got to you got to get rid of that old way of thinking, the old way that you did things, the old way, all of that. It has to be removed. And the way that you uproot that system and institute something new is through the word of God fasting and prayer. That's the only thing that's going to break that. And of course, you can go to therapy, too. If you um, have a good therapist that you trust, that you would like to go, you know, and speak to them, that's also an option. Uh, uh, Tanae, I think it's Tanae Copeland. How do you break away from the narcissist when I help raise his son? Now he uses the son. I don't want to seem mean, but uh, no, don't want to seem mean and cut the baby off. What should I do? Cut him off because they're attached to the narcissist. And I know that sounds harsh, but the narcissist is not going to let you have a relationship with that child outside of them. They're not going to let you do it. They're not going to let you do it. And they're going to they're going to use that child to manipulate you. That's what they're going to do. And that's how they play the game. And they're not. And it's and it's going to be sad and sadistic. And what they will end up doing is turning that child uh, against you altogether. So what you have to do is you just got to leave. You can't even play with them. You know what I'm saying? You can't play with it. You just got to go because a narcissist doesn't want to do right. They don't want to tell the truth. They don't, you know. They, you have to, unfortunately, the child has to go with them unless you just want to be manipulated. Uh, cluster B, cluster B free. She says, Queen, uh, Queen tells you so true. The educator, uh, very well might be on the down low. Yeah. Plus they like to get a reaction out of her. Yep. That part. Absolutely. It's the truth. Uh, Max Potential says, before I discarded the narcissist, I saw the new supply being trained uh, to do the same profession as him, the old supply and the baby mama. Okay. He is into film cinema, cinematography. Is that how narcissists groom their supply? Yep. They will. They will. They'll groom them like that. But most of the grooming is going to be emotionally. But it's good if they can have them around them all the time, too. That's a good thing. A narcissist doesn't mind that. They don't mind that either. But they'll groom their supply and, and try to make them do what they want them to do. Okay, make sure y'all put a um, Q in front of your question. Okay, not a question mark, a Q. Okay, so I know it's a question. Why did the narc date down instead of up and then try to triangulate me against the female he is with that looks like a, ooh. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The female that looks like a man looks like a, just a dude <laughs> look like a whole dude out here. <laughs> okay, let me go. Uh, she stole one of my Facebook pictures. Ah, y'all, this is funny to me. She stole one of my Facebook pictures of the year. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Facebook pictures uh, of me years ago, then posted it on her pages as if I don't look at anything. In my eyes, I look better than her, but she looked like a <laughs> she looked like a dude. <laughs> Woo! 
Y'all, man, they, uh, uh, you know what? A lot of times they will date down. I know y'all that look, they hollering in the chat. I know. Listen, they will because they want a reaction out of you. Let me tell you what a narcissist will do. A narcissist will date down because they want you to have a reaction from it, right? They're like, look, I got away from you and I got someone way worse than you. So it's it's to like insult you. Look what I got. You know, you were a, you are a beauty queen and everything. And what I went to do is just get I, I went to go get the the bottom of the barrel because I just want you to know that this is what <laughs> this is what I really feel comfortable with. Y'all, that narcissist will have y'all cussing in the shower, in front of the mirror, and everything else. Y'all be y'all. Some of y'all done cussed that narcissist straight out because y'all seen that new supply. Y'all seen the new supply? <laughs> that new supply had y'all messed up. Tell me they didn't. Y'all done call that new supply everything. Y'all done cussed them out in your mind. Some of y'all, y'all didn't fuss them out. You cussed them out. Yeah, you did. You did that thing. You did that thing. Yeah, you did. And, and but they wanted, they want to date down. That's what they love. They want, because they want a reaction out of you. They want you to say something. She stole one of your, that's why. That's why, because they want you to call them and say, you know what? I know good and well. I know you didn't get somebody looking like that. I mean, you just, you could have done better than that. They, that's what they want you to do. And, and then you know what they'll, <laughs> y'all know what they'll <laughs> turn around and tell you. <laughs> oh, that new supply can be looking like Willie B in the Atlanta Zoo. Quit playing with me. Do you hear me be looking like Willie B in the Atlanta Zoo? Do y'all know Willie B the gorilla li, 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 up in the that new supply could be looking like that? And that narcissist will tell you that 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 new supply is the best thing since sliced bread. They look way better than you. They finer than you. They could do everything better than you. And you be like, and you just be sitting there with smoke coming out of your ears and from under your neck. <laughs> That narcissist will do that. That's why I'm telling y'all it's crazy. Yeah, that's why. That's why I'm. That that's why they do it. You know what I'm saying? Because they want you to say something. They be like, say something, say something, say something. You know what I'm saying? Five says, why do narcissists continually triangulate? Oh, okay. I think I got to that one already. Yeah, y'all wait just a second. Yeah, that's what they do. That's what they do. Hold on, y'all. Let me make sure I got. Hold on. Wait a minute. Where was that next question? Uh, y'all, but y'all gotta stop. Y'all gotta stop looking at their social media because I'm telling you, it's disgusting. Wendy says, "Why, uh, why would my narc threaten to walk away from our relationship if I can't reach out to his family?" Oh, they, um, th they gonna walk away. They just lying. All he trying to do is to call your bluff to see what you gonna do. Okay. That's what the narc, he, 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 he may threaten to walk away from the relationship, but he gonna walk, he'll come back. They'll come back. They always come back. They always come back. If you were grade A supply, they'll always come back. But if he threatening you to, uh, to walk away, you ought to be saying, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Can you do it today? You know what I'm saying? Trying to get that thing right on up out of your way because he don't mean you no good. But, you know, if you still with him, you just got, you know, you got to go through a few more cycles before you can get, you know, if, if, uh, before you get tired. But yeah, he if he if he's threatening you to walk away, he's just doing that because he wants you to do what he what he wants you to do. So he's gonna threaten you with leaving, but he'll be back. So if you don't want to reach out to his family, don't do it. And let him leave and he'll come right back. That's what they do. Let me see.
Uh, hold on, y'all. Let's see. Hold on. Let me get this. Uh, okay. Hold on. Let me put this in here. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So let me go to the next question. I just had to return a message real quick. Um, let's see. All right. So Miss Leo Goddess says, can you become a narcissist after being with a narcissist? No, but you can have narcissistic fleas. You know what I'm saying? Narcissistic fleas are just like the residue that's left behind a narcissist. Some people become narcissistic because of being in these toxic relationships, because you almost have to become like them to live with them because it's so hard. You know what I'm saying? They're crazy. They do all kinds of ridiculous things. You know what I'm saying? To, to just really mess with you. And so if you want to stay in the relationship, a lot of times you have to just, you know, you have to uh, become almost like them to be in a relationship with them. Um, Angela Stewart. Hello, Angela. She says, why does it seem like my ex has been uh, bulldozing through new supplies after me? Because he has. You know, narcissist monkey branch. So after y'all are gone. OK, so here's the thing. After you gone um, away from the narcissist. Right. So. Once you move on, okay, once you go on about your business, whatever you're going to do, the narcissist, what they do is the narcissist is going to go from supply to supply, but he's going through all of those supplies like that because he's looking for somebody like you and he can't find it. You know what I'm saying? He can't find that, that he can't find you anymore. So if you're not available and you're not going to go back to them, that's what, you know, this is what you see. You know what I'm saying? This is you. This is how they gonna get down because that's just how they do it. So when you're um when you're dealing with a when you oh, hold on y'all wait a minute hold on when you are dealing with them you gotta look at it like this when when they're when they're going through their supplies like that you have to know that they're doing that because they're trying to find a another supply like you but if they can't find you again what they'll eventually do is try to come back that's just what that's how they do it you know what i'm saying that's how they do it so they just monkey branch through supplies like that um it's chris she says my ex continues to email me since he's blocked on everything. Okay. Uh, I've had no contact since uh, October 23. Why won't, uh, why won't he just let me go when he knows he's no good for me? Cause he won't, he won't back into your life. He want that good, that good fuel that you were, you were giving to him. He don't, he doesn't want to let you go because he's afraid that somebody else is going to take you. And not only that, he's afraid that you're going to heal and become whole. And if you heal and become whole, that's going to be awful for him. You know why? Because that once you do that, he knows that he don't have a chance in, in hell to come back. He just don't. Not a snowball chance in hell. He knows he's not going to be able to come back. So you got to. So that's why. So he narcissists like to stay on your mind, y'all. They want to continue to occupy real estate in your mind right? So they can live in your brain rent free. And even they, even though you're not with them, they're still with you because you constantly thinking about them. Uh, Gina, thank you so much. She said, please let them know the only way to break the narc, uh, to break the narc is to totally, uh, is totally no contact. If they call, don't answer. If they say something, don't answer. It's a totally ignored. That is the absolute truth. Mm-hmm. It's the truth. You're right about that. That's the truth right there. You can't answer their call. You can't do any of that. Uh, Chris says, um, says, I'm trying to close out the cycle and I've completely healed almost as sin, but they keep holding on. 
what uh keep holding on what emotions how long does it does that last does that end last uh what end holding on what emotions how long does that end last what you mean the end of the emotions i don't understand chris can you ask me again put it in the chat Stacy says, I'm reading and seeing everywhere that narcissists, uh, that those with narcissists do not co-parent. They counter-parent. Is this true? Yes, they do counter-parent. Narcissists do not co-parent at all. So that's, that's a no. They do not co-parent. Um, I call myself being civil. Uh, but he's using our nine-year-old daughter in his uh, knock against me. Okay. In his knocks against you. Okay. I currently have her in counseling and don't want to take her from him, but should I get the courts involved? Uh, if he's abusing or trying to do parental alienation, but you're going to have to have a lot of evidence, you know, it's going to, you're going to have to write down document, 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 everything. Okay. Pat Murphy says uh, they are damned souls playing out. Uh, let's see. Are they? Hold on. If they don't repent. Mm -hmm. If they don't repent. Absolutely. Sally says uh, question. I used to call him lovely bear. Oh, okay. Hmm. Vanessa's, I mean, Gary says, uh, why do they need so much attention? Because they're insecure and have low self-esteem and they need to constantly be validated, y'all. A narcissist always needs validation because that's part of your, the fuel supply that you give to them. Okay. That's part of that fuel supply. Jennifer says, my ex-narcissist became a Muslim and expected me to believe as, <clears throat> expected me to believe that he has changed and some, somehow better than me. Why is that? Um, well, because he wants you to, he wants to, wants you to think that because he's joined that religion or, you know, that whatever, you know, that religion that he's, He's changed and that he's more spiritually superior than you. So you should be begging to have him back in your life. They always trying something, y'all. These narcs are crazy. They got issues, a whole lot of them. But that's what he's doing. He's trying to make it seem like he's better than you now and you should be privileged to come back to him and be in his life. Don't you do it. It'd be the worst mistake ever. Um, let's see. Jerome says, does a narcissist use the, uh, use other people to talk to you, uh, just so they can talk, um, do a Hoover by proxy. Yes, they will do that. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yep. They will. They'll do a Hoover by proxy. That's called a Hoover by proxy, Jerome. Ashanti said, is it possible for a narcissist to Hoover without saying anything? Um, my ex has shown up at my church and it is as if he is there just to get a reaction out of me. They'll do that. They'll post subliminals on, on Facebook or on social media. Yeah, they will. And, and they'll come around and won't say nothing to you, hoping that you will walk up to them and say something to them. You know, they're always wanting a reaction out of you because that's supply for them, right? Okay. That's supply. <clears throat> 
Okay, so let's see. Danielle. Okay, hold on. Danielle, here's your question. Danielle says, uh, what would be considered a good supply and what makes the narcissist think that they can come back? Good supply is somebody that does not question them. Good supply is someone that will march to the beat of the narcissist drum, do whatever it is that the narcissist wants to do. That is considered good supply for a narcissist. Okay. A uh, good supply is also someone that will basically be a doormat and emotionally uh, available with no boundaries and no balance. That's good supply. And they think that they can always come back because they never give you closure. So you don't have a reason to put them out. Okay. So they, even though they act horribly, they do all of these horrible things right? They, they'll gaslight you and tell you that it's not them, it's you. So if, as long as you, if they can get you to believe that everything is your fault, then they don't have to take the blame for anything, right? They don't have to take the blame. So what you, so what they'll do is they'll, they'll make you think that everything is your fault. And so they think they can come back and forth whenever they want, because you are the one that needs to be fixed, not them. Yeah, so that's that's why they do that. Deborah says, why does the narc um uh let's see? Yeah. Let's see. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so she says, why do narcs do this? He totally ghosted me. No conversation, et cetera. As though he never knew me. He can't face me. Why? He totally ghosted you. He has a, he probably has another supply. They, uh, if he ghosted you, wait a minute, let me ask you a question. If he ghosted you, was that because you took him back? Did he, did you answer a Hoover? Because sometimes they answer you. If you answer a Hoover, they'll ghost you because you answered it. And if he can't face you, um, why can't he face me? He, do, he doesn't want to because he probably gave, he, he didn't give you closure. And if he faces you, you're going to ask him questions and he's going to have to come up with some answers. He doesn't want to do that because right now he doesn't want to talk to you. He just wants you to keep looking for him and keep looking for the closure and let some more time pass. Because see, narcs think like this, the longer, the more time that passed, the more desperate you're going to become, right? So that's what they think. So the more time passes, the more desperate you're going to become. And so a narcissist always wants, listen. They always want you to be desperate for them to come back because if you're desperate for them to come back, you're going to, you're going, you're going to do whatever. So when they finally come back, you'll be like, oh, thank you. I'm so glad to see you. I'm just so happy you're here. That's what he's doing. He don't want to face you because he wants some more time to pass. Okay. That's what he wants to do. Um, That's why he's behaving like that. Uh, what is he, uh, let's see, what if he was in the wrong? It don't matter. They gonna still lie and say you was, you were the one in the wrong. That's how the narcissists play that game. They don't care nothing about that. They gonna make you think that you're the one that's, that need all the help. Um, Brian, Brian, thank you. He says, why did my ex narc continue to blame me for everything that went wrong in, in, uh, the marriage, even though, when I show her proof, oh, because she going to gaslight you because narcissists don't take accountability. She's not going to take accountability for that. So you can so you can blame it on her. So you could tell her she needs help. That's not allowed. She's not going to do that. No, absolutely not. Mm -mm. No, she going to and see it's part of her not being uh, not taking accountability because you got to realize that empathy piece is missing. Remember, they don't have empathy, so they don't care what they do to you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Blueberry Pie says, um, says my thank you so much for the uh, super chat. Says mine seriously stalked me 
into God bless you for that into uh psycho oh lord in the psychosis no lie wow then sent a family member over to threaten me because I went no contact I feel I will never recover oh my god that's crazy did you have to go in the hospital in the psychosis My God. Blueberry, you still in the chat? Did you have to go in the hospital? Yes. Oh my goodness. I am so sorry. Wow. Ain't no telling what that narcissist was doing. Bless your heart. You'll recover. You got you do you um do you pray and read your word? Do you know Jesus? She said they had the know. Wait a minute. They had knowledge about my mental health. Oh, they had knowledge about my mental health that I didn't. They got me after the delivery. Oh, oh, they got you after the delivery of your baby. Because you already be in a real fragile state after that every day now. Did you have postpartum? She probably, you, you had postpartum, huh? Did you have postpartum? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Baby girl, you got to get in that Bible. You got to get in that Bible and you got to get in your prayer closet. That is crazy. Wow. Hmm. Wow. Wee! You'll recover. How old is your baby? How old is your baby blueberry pie? How long have how long has that been? Wow. I'm still, uh, I rather, okay, 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 uh, still young. Okay, I understand. Yeah, you'll get past it, but you got to get into that word though. You're going to have to get into that word because I remember I told y'all that whenever you're dealing with anything mental going on, that no, no medication has ever cleared any type of mental disorder or anything, okay? No medication. What you got to do is, Anything that affects your soul realm, which is your mental state, right? It's going to have to be something soulish that is going to affect that. So what you have to do when you're, when you're dealing with soulish things, when you're dealing with things that, that, that affect the mind, you got to know that whatever affects that is going to be something spiritual. So in order to do battle with something spiritual, you have to go on a spiritual plane in order to do battle with that. OK, so you're not going to be able to do battle with that in the natural. You're going to have to have something that is going to be able to fight for you and war for you in the in the spiritual realm, because it's a demonic attack against your soul. OK, that's what that is. That's what that is. That's awful. Uh, Chris says, why are they uh, doing why are they doing death uh, spells and black magic on me every day? And that's not working. They don't get it. They because that's what they do. If they can't sometimes narcissists, if they can't have you. Then they, you know, they, they don't, they don't want you. They want you unalived and that's crazy, but that, that, you know, they'll try it, but they're wicked though. That's the, that's the problem. They're wicked. So they going to try some craziness. Um, she says, I'm sorry. I don't, uh, I don't know how to pronounce your, your name, sis, but he scares me because I discarded him. I see him down the street from my job by my home and ev uh, everywhere else. Be careful. Okay. Be careful because some of them are, uh, are some lunatics and I'm talking about some real loons. Be careful. Please, please, please be careful. Okay. Please be careful. Be careful. Um, 
Just watch your surroundings. Uh, Max Potential says, why does the narcissist block you on social media when they are the ones wrong? I confronted him when I found out about the new supply. That's the part that behooves me. Mm. They're going to block you on social media to get a reaction out of you. Okay. They are. They'll block you on social media to get a reaction out of you because they want you to say something. They want you to they want you to be uh, 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 disrespected. They want you to be disgusted at what they did. And then they want your attention. And, and there's no better way to get your attention than to do something that's going to cause them to cause you to be like, I know this clown didn't block me. I know they didn't do so and so this and that. Yeah, they'll do that. But they're doing it because they want a reaction out of you. They want you, uh, they want you to, they just want you to cut up and see when you do. And when you do decide to say something to them about it, then what they do is they take that emotional response that you give to them and they use that as fuel. Okay. That's, that's what they thrive off of is your emotion. So the more emotion you give to them, the more, the more they like it. OK, so he yeah, he's going to he'll block you on social media, even if they, they were the ones that's wrong. You know, when you confront them about anything or you say anything, yeah, they'll they will. They'll do that. And they and, and they know that they're wrong about it. But see, they have you got to think about it like this. They have a band of toxic enablers that they done told all types of lies to. And so they'll go back and get another conversation going with them, lying to them some more. And they're like, oh, I wouldn't talk to that person. I wouldn't talk to that person. Then, you know, they go back out and start telling more lies because they have people that also feed into that and, and encourage them to go do those types of things too. Not because, and they do it because they got wrong information. They don't know that the narcissist has been over there. They probably do know the narcissist has done acted an unadulterated fool, but they're not going to say anything about it because they don't want to be bothered with the narcissist either. But they keep people around them that enable them to perpetuate that sadistic behavior along with the dark malevolent forces that they have too, you know. Um, D cam says my ex narc used to, uh, used to holler divorce every time he was upset. Now we have been separated for almost three years and, um, for three years and two meetups later to sign paperwork. He still has not filed. Why? Wait a minute. So he still, so are you waiting on him to send a D cam? You still in here? Are you sit, are you waiting on him to send uh, the divorce paperwork? Are you still in here? Are you still in here, Decam? Because I'm I why because you know what I wouldn't wait on him to send no fa uh fit, send the pa okay she you are you waiting on him to send the divorce paperwork okay she's still in here you didn't want to file for divorce let's see She says now, okay, now I'm just wait. Okay, let me see what you say. Now I'm just waiting for my income to. Oh, okay, uh, okay, because I see he's a liar. Okay, I was just wanting to make sure because you know narcissists, and the reason I wanted to ask you that is because narcissists they like to do that. They like to hold up your life, telling you lies, talking about they're gonna file uh, divorce papers and all of that. They're not gonna do a thing. OK, they're not going to do anything. The narcissist is not going to file any paperwork. They're just going to tell you that lie to keep you holding on. OK, to keep your life tore up in shambles. That's it. And then you can't move on without them. But that's why they do it. OK, but you waiting on. So you going to. Yeah, they won't. They won't do it. They he's because they collect people. They collect people. Why would he why would he want to get rid of you? You know what I'm saying? But you need to get him up out of there. Uh, Mona says, we broke up three months ago. 
um, to go straight to another relationship. Unfortunately, both living in the same neighbor, I guess you meant neighborhood as me. Uh, he looked so smug the day I passed them uh, both driving past the car. What's your question? Uh, what's the question? I didn't see the question, sis. Hold on. Mona, can you put it in the chat again? Um, Miss Leo Goddess says, why after dating a narc, it seems like that's all you attract is narcissists. You know, if you don't heal from the, um, from the relationship, you will, it will seem like that's what you continue to do. You got to heal and become whole, right? You got to establish those boundaries. You got to get that balance in your life. You got to get that spiritual alignment with the most high God. And you got to know who you are. Because what you have to do is you have to you have to rise to a level. See, I, I, I want to teach it like this. Let me say it like this. In the spiritual realm, there are things called frequencies. Okay? Frequencies. Meaning, you know, what frequency on, are you on? What energy level are you on? You know, some people say energy level, frequency, the level of enlightenment. Okay? So... What you have to understand about narcissists and how they do things, okay? When you're dealing with them as far as um, when you are attracting narcissists, let me say it like that, when you, are, when you feel like you continue to attract them, um, what you're typically doing is you have to be able to raise your frequency, meaning that you have to become more enlightened. And, and with that enlightenment comes more self-care. It comes with healing. It comes with restoration by reading the word of God, feeding on the word of God, feeding on, you know, make, making sure that you keep your prayer life intact. You know, all of these different things, because when you do that, what you essentially do is you set yourself up to be it, to be on a different frequency in a different dimension from the narcissist. And then what y'all need to understand is that they they read you. You know what I'm saying? Narcissists literally read you. Right. They they're testing you in the spirit realm to see where you are, because remember, they work with dark, malevolent forces that that show them which person to pick out. Right. But you got to raise and, and, and it, I don't like to say raise your discernment because discernment is not an absolute. And the reason it's not an absolute is because if you haven't healed and become whole, then that discernment that you're looking for from the Holy Spirit is not going to work for you. Because discernment works on faith, not fear. Okay. Most of the people think that they're discerning something and they're not discerning a thing. They're actually triggered by a thing. Why? Because they're still unhealed. Okay. And I, oh, I knew this person was so and so, so and so, but it wasn't discernment. It was a trigger because the person did something that they had seen in the past and all of that. And it triggered them. And they could have been right about whatever they saw because they had seen it in the past. Right. But triggers and and uh, and trauma works off of fear. Discernment works off of faith. So whenever you're you're healing and you're moving on from that, it's important that you learn to you got to heal and become whole so you can tap in the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit can lead and guide you. Right. That's so important. That's so important, y'all. But um, OK, let me see. Hold on. Lenise says my upstairs neighbor uh, called the police on me Friday and uh, told them she wanted them to mediate between us. This sick, uh, the sick part is mediate what? What? What she called the, the, the uh, police for, Lenise? What happened? What happened, sis? What did you, what, what did you, why did she call the police saying that y'all need to mediate? Did you, um,
Thank you, Rochelle. Is Lanice still in here? Okay, I don't see her. Okay. Lanice, put it in the chat if you um if you hear and you uh, oh she said, oh, she is mad that my friend called called on her. Oh, okay. Yeah, so she oh, that's what they do. They'll try to get you back. Yep. They sure will. Okay. So that's what she's doing then. Yeah, they're gonna do that. They'll always try to do some dumb stuff like that. Deborah says, Can you suggest prayers on how to release at, uh remove and totally get rid of that spirit? Um, well, the number one prayer you're gonna pray, um, you can do prayers of deliverance and supplication for yourself, right? Because you do need to um, I mean, you need to do so, and you might need deliverance too. But if you're looking for specific things, you can email me, okay? But it, it, the two that comes to mind first are prayers of supplication for yourself. So you're, um, I'm sorry, petitioning. I apologize. Petitioning prayers for yourself and deliverance prayers, not supplication, but petitioning, okay? Petitioning God for, for what you need him to do in you. Okay, let's see. Well, let's see the next one. Okay, Kimberly says, what if the family members are calling after you've left the narcissist and they leave messages saying, uh, just cause y'all didn't work out, don't mean we, uh, we can still talk. Is he putting them up to it? Yep. Don't you fall for that. Oh, please don't. Because the family does that all the time, y'all. This is good. That That's a good question. Uh, wait a minute, y'all. Wait, wait a minute. Y'all need to, um, hold on. I got to get, wait a minute. Okay, here we go. Okay. That's a good question right there. He's putting them up to it. Yeah, he's going to put them up to it because he he too scared to reach out himself. He's not going to reach out and say anything. He's going to he's going to put them he's going to put them up to it and then they're going to keep on calling because see they want to keep they want to stay in with you. Okay? That's what the family members are there. Those toxic enablers, they're there to uphold and upgird uh, you know undergird that narcissist. OK, the family is going to absolutely do whatever it is that the narcissist want them to do. That's it. They are. They're going to do whatever the narcissist want them to do. So whatever it is that the narcissist is telling you or whatever the family is telling telling you, it, it's coming directly from the narcissist. And also too, the fam, if you say something bad about the narcissist, the family is going to go back and tell the narc that too. So don't ever tell the narcissist something that you think the family is not going to find out. But I mean, don't tell the family something that you don't think that the narcissist is going to find out because they're going to go right to the narcissist and tell the narcissist exactly, exactly what you said. Okay. The family is not there for you, but the reason they're trying to stay in touch is because they want to keep you around because they, they want to get rid of that clown. That's what they do. Um, Blueberry Pie says, do they ever go away? It's going on four years. They can go away for a time period, but if they feel like they have an opportunity with you to come back, they're going to come back. 
because they don't want to lose supply. They don't want you to move on and be happy with somebody else. Like that's not allowed. They don't want you to be happy by yourself. They don't want you to be happy with anybody else. A narcissist don't want you happy, period. They want to mess you all the way up if they can. That's their whole goal. Okay. Uh, Nick says, do narcissists uh, ever recover from being a narcissist and have a chance of having a genuine relationship? Only if they go into what we call behavioral cognitive therapy. Okay. They can go into behavioral cognitive therapy and they can possibly get uh, to a place where they're more aware of their behaviors. You know, they can actually go through a deliverance and probably release all them demons that they got and they'll probably be all right. But most narcissists don't want to do that. Okay. Because they're afraid of, of, of living life. They're afraid of living their truth. Okay. They're afraid of, of connecting themselves to their, their true selves. Because they they don't know how to live in that in that body in their in as their true selves because they adopted what we call this false self or this false persona they adopted that years ago when they were children and traumatized so now they what they want is to be they like look this is who I am and and basically they want you to accept them the way that they are so i mean they could if they wanted to but the chances of that happening are slim to none but they know they know something is wrong with them uh let me see next question yes email it to me chris excuse me Hmm. Let's see. Where's my next question? Okay. Kofo Blue says, my narc is um, dying. I've gone no contact since August. I don't respond to his texts, etc. Uh, I know I should block him, but can't because of his terminal condition. Okay. Am I wrong for not blocking him? I mean, it's up to you. If you... Um, if he's, if he's terminally ill and you don't, you know, you feel like it would just, if, if it would bother you to do that to him, that's totally up to you. I mean, I, I think for me, once I'm done, I'm done. It's not that you don't have a heart to, you know, or maybe sad about what they're going through because we're still human. Right. But if it's going to prevent you from moving on and being healthy, then you need to make a decision on that. Um, sorry to hear about that. That's sad. I hope he accept Christ before he leave out of here and repent. K-pop says, um, my wife for 22 years dumped us, the whole family with us having four adult kids, um, kids caught her micro cheating and now we are all broken. My kids all on my side. What do? Mm. She'll come back. You just got to not be available. Don't, don't, don't let her come back and just act like it was nothing because that's a lot of times what they, they want to do. They'll come back and blame it on you and tell you that it's your fault, that you, you're the reason why they had to go out and cheat. You know, you're the reason why they did whatever the, it is that they did. Don't let them do it to you. Okay. That, you know, that's, that's normal. Unfortunately, that is actually normal behavior for a narcissist. Unfortunately. That's sad, but it's true. Um, Max Potential said, Telsha says, you have a banging body coat bottle shape and the new supply is shaped like a, two, uh, a two liter bottle. <laughs> Those are Telsha's words, not mine. Yeah, I have, I've said that on a few videos. <laughs> For real. 
<laughs> they look like a whole two or three liter. You know what I'm saying? You shaped up like a Coke bottle, honey. They looking like the number 10. You know what I'm saying? 11 and 12. You like, what is happening? What happened right there? Like, are you serious? Like, this, this is what you doing? You doing it like this? Man. Jay says, uh, narc videos uh, such as from yourself have helped uh, tremendously. I'm a bit obsessed with them and now feel I need to move on. How do I let go? Because I certainly wouldn't have, uh, wouldn't have him back. 34 years was enough. Oh Lord. Just find you something else to do. You know, some people, um, sometimes, you know, when, when you get to watching content, it's like you get, you get obsessed with getting all the knowledge that you need to have, or you, you want to have to keep yourself from going back into another situation like that. So I get it. I understand, but you know, you just try to, you, you try to taper it down. You know, and um, just ask God to help you, you know, to let go of those things, because it can be sometimes it can be a, in a very negative space in your life, even though it's content that's helping you and it's good. You know, you need to watch the content and to get as much information as you can about it. But once you feel like you've healed to a place where you don't need it, then you just move on. I know there are people that come in and out of this community all the time. Um, I, I still watch content, you know, I what, but I watch it for a different reason. You know, I'm watching to see, you know, what's the new thing that's going on? You know, what are people saying? You know, cause there are always new content creators coming on and there are older ones that have been here, but, uh, different ones have different perspectives on different things. And sometimes it's really good to hear other perspectives on, uh, what they think about certain issues and topics in this community. But um, definitely, you know, when, you know, if you feel like you don't need it anymore, you just find something else to do. Occupy your time. Mimi says, two-year relationship with my narc. I moved out of state. He came after and uh, had an episode, got violent, got arrested. Everything is over with the courts too. But uh, he is still in the state working with nobody here. Uh, let's see. It's weird. He just popped up at my house, invited, uh, uninvited one time after coming home from a night out and told me he was, what he told me he was wasted. Is it wasted too? I didn't see him. Hmm. Oh, and told me he was there too. I'm sorry, was there too. I apologize. It just ran together. I didn't see him. How do I keep him away from me, home and my kids? I'm certain he has new supply and joined the Sunshine State, but it makes it hard for me. Um, are those kids his? Two-year relationship. Okay, so you, the kids are probably not his. So you have to, if you can't move, you just have to let him know if he comes to your house again, you'll call the police. You got to put, you got to put your foot down. You got to tell him something like that because most narcissists don't want to be in trouble like that, right? But you're going to have to put your foot down and tell him. Uh, let's see. And then threaten to call the police on him. Okay, we're getting uh, to one um, hour. Th I'm trying to stay under an hour and a half. Let's see, where's my next question? Um, but if you can't move, you just tell him you're going to call the cops if he keeps coming over. Is the soul tie automatically broken when the narc dies? No. Mm -mm. Because that the, the, the mind is part of your soul realm, right? The mind is a part of your soul. So if you are, so what happens is if you are still thinking about the narcissist, if you're still thinking about them, then you, you still have that tie is still in place. Okay, Chris, I got it. Thank you. Grade A supply. 
somebody that takes care of the narcissist, does everything that the narcissist wants them to do with no questions asked, giving them copious amounts of emotional reactions, money, sex, uh, whatever it is they need. Uh, for narcissistic men, it's usually someone that they, uh, a woman that they will parentify, a woman that will basically be like a mother to them. But they, but still can, they can, they can have sex with. Uh, Melody says, I always hear you say they always come back and want you back. Yet he's not reached out to me in months and actually has me blocked on everything. Okay, well, if he's a if he's a, a narcissist, if he is a for real narcissist, he'll be back. He will. Sometimes people are just toxic. They're not necessarily a narcissist. Sometimes they're just toxic. Andrea says, is this true that most narcissists, when they get uh, old, uh, uh, when they get old, develop dementia, uh, all the narcissists that I've dated, narcissistic father or grandfather ended up with dementia. That, that it, it seems like it would be a disease that could set, uh, certainly be their law of reciprocity because they sure don't have dementia while they're with you. They remember everything that you do and somehow can't remember anything that they do. So it looks like it, it looks like that's just the law of reciprocity coming back to bite them in their behinds. Hi, Miss De. Hi, highly favored. Hello, VIPs in the house. Good to see you. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Where's another question? Question, 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 question. Okay. Regina says, why would a narc try to continue seeing me even though I know he's seeing someone else just to see if he can get back? Because remember, y'all, thank you so much, Linda Best. Thank you, Miss Linda. God bless you. Remember, I told you all uh, for the super chat. Remember, I told you all that when the narcissist, uh, when they get with the new supply, you become the most wanted. They don't even want to be with the new supply anymore. They want you. Remember that? Tim says, do you think uh, you can find mental toughness in a uh, comfortable place? No, absolutely not. Mm -mm. Mental toughness is going to definitely come out of contrary situations, unfortunately. Unfortunately. You're gonna have to you gonna have to go through a little bit to be able to develop that mental toughness, but you gotta want to do it. Uh Connie says, What should I do if my ex narc is uh doing witchcraft on me? Make sure you don't do any, make sure you stay away from anything that could cause that curse to land because the Bible says a curse causeless cannot come. Okay, so that means that you don't need to be engaging in anything that could cause that thing to land and light on you. OK, that means that you got it. You need to you need to spiritually be in your word, praying, rebuking anything, uh, witchcraft. Don't eat nothing from the narcissist, whatever the narcissist could have given you. You need to throw it away or burn it, whichever one you you want to do. But keep yourself in a place spiritually where the enemy has no foothold and cannot find a loophole to get you. And that's how witchcraft actually works, is that the enemy has to have a loophole. Okay, let's see. Queen W say, can, uh, can one narcissist family member set you for another narcissist situationship? As I believe this is what happened to me. Um, also, let's see, to me. Also, do they recognize each other in, in spirit? Well, they'll just tell you it's something about that person. I don't think they necessarily say spiritually, but they'll say it's something about that person or it's something about uh, whatever it is. They're you know, it's something about them. But uh, 
they don't usually typically set you up for somebody else. You set yourself up for that when you don't heal. OK, when you don't heal. And that's why it's so important that you heal from the abuse, because when you heal from the abuse, then you, you don't you don't typically go back into those same patterns and cycles. So. Hopefully that helped you. Uh, let's see. What's the next question. OK. Broken But Heal says I've had several dreams that my ex narc is going to jail doesn't that indicate severe uh, restriction and bondage? It could. It could. You want to pray and ask God what that means. You know what I'm saying? What is that? Why, 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 why am I dreaming about that? But it could mean that. Absolutely. Dio says, should I tell the nurse, should I tell all the secrets about the narc after the breakup? That's up to you. I wouldn't though, because all you're going to do is, um, who are you going to tell it to? Because what you're going to do is you're going to just cause yourself to engage with that negative energy. You don't want to do it. You just want to pray and ask God to get, to take that out of your, out of your mind and out of your heart, you know? Because when you're trying to hurt somebody else, you end up getting hurt in the process because what you deal what you dealing out now is going to have to come back too. So you just don't, you really don't want to deal with it like that. I wouldn't want to. I would just be like, nah, I'm not going to deal with that. You know? Uh, what if you have kids? Be ready for them to counter parent with you. They're not going to co-parent. They're going to counter parent. They're going to try to do everything against you. Uh, Deborah says, how to control ruminating thoughts about the narc. Okay, so this is where the washing of the word comes. Washing your mind. You know, feeding your mind the word of God. Feeding your mind the word of God. That's where that's going to come in. You're going to have to do something to, you're going to have to plant something new in that mind. You know what I'm saying? Because if you don't, that's what you're just going to continue to go over and over in those same ruminating thoughts because the enemy likes to do that. He likes to control your mind that way. You know what I'm saying? To keep you stuck on the narcissist. So remember I talked about earlier in the live stream in order to institute something new, a new system in order to disrupt that demonic ruminating system that is in your mind, that thing has to be uprooted. And then once it's uprooted, something else positive and fulfilling has to be planted there like the word of God, like prayer, like fasting. You have to, you, you have to align yourself spiritually with the, with the most high God, because that's the only thing that's going to heal your soul because your mind is part of your soul realm. Okay. Your soul houses your mind, your will, and your emotions. All right. So that's how you, that's, that's how you're going to, to control and eliminate ruminating thoughts. Um, okay. So I'm going to get a couple of more questions and then we're going to get out. Um, cause I want to stay under two, uh, hour and a half. I want to make sure I get y'all out of here in an hour and a half. So I'll take this question and one more, uh, Kayla, thank you so much. So is it possible to go back to the narc and not have them seek revenge on, you No, they're going to seek revenge. They are, they're going to try to get you in one way or another. It may not be right up in your face, but they're going to try to get you. They have to, that's what they, you know, they got to do it. Um, Yashua made in, uh, 144, if you reverse discard them, but, uh, reverse discard them, they will let you go easier if they know you're truly done with them. Mm. If you, if they reverse discard you, mm. I don't know about that. Reverse discard you? What you mean? Like you discard the narcissist? 
they'll let you go easier. If you discard them, they definitely not going to let you go easier with that. Mm -mm. Let me take one more question. Tim says, uh, do you agree with what we never taught? Do you agree with that? We were never taught how to be mentally tough or our, uh, all our lives because parents and parents were never taught that either. And that contributed to demons and weakness. Um, yeah, that could definitely come from the family line. Absolutely. Yep. Because you, you can only do what you're taught. You know what I'm saying? And the rest of it, you have to learn on your own. Thank you, Vanessa Marie. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let me see. Hold on, let me see. Oh, hold on. Here's one. Cool. How, I need to answer this. Hold on. Wait a minute. She says, hold on, y'all. I'm trying to get done, but um, I've done my work. Thanks to people like you. Three years ago, no contact. Now I have a 67-year-old, year hot, wonderful client getting ghosted after 12 years. I'm trying to help without overstepping. How can I handle? Tell them the truth. Tell them the truth about what's going to happen. Tell them the truth. Because if you don't tell them the truth, they, I mean, and, and they may not take what you're saying. They may just be like, oh, well, they may not even want to listen, but just tell them the truth. Tell them about what, you know, what you, you went through, you know, without overstepping your bounds. Sometimes when you just come down to, when you come down to a level and just begin to like reason with them and kind of share with them, this is, these are some of the things that I went through, you know, you, you kind of open the door up for them to open themselves to, to hear more of what you have to say without overstepping your bounds. Hopefully that makes sense. But transparency is, is a powerful thing. It is very powerful. Okay, y'all, we are almost at the one hour mark. I want to just pray really quickly and get out of here. Um, the, that's all the time we have for questions today. Uh, let's see. Nicole, thank you so much for the super chat. She says how to take photos with, uh, with X 25 years at daughter's wedding. Just do it for your baby. Cause your child probably gonna want to be in the, in the, want you to be in the photo with, with their other parents. So just do what you have to do for the baby, for your, for your daughter. That's it. <laughs> Okay. All right, y'all. So we going to be back on Thursday. Thursday, I am going to be, I'm going to, uh, Thursday, we're going to have, uh, I'll have the topic posted usually Wednesday night to let you know what we're going to be talking about on Thursday. I love our Q and A sessions because we get to answer a lot of good questions. Um, uh, just, I mean, it's, it's, it's some invaluable information, right? And I love to get, jump in the chat and get as many questions as I can answer, but we're going to go ahead and pray. Cause I got to get to prayer myself. All right, y'all. So father, I thank you so, so much for this time in the fellowship, Lord. Thank you for the questions that have been dropped in the chat. Lord, I pray for each and every person that is here on tonight. Oh God, Lord, I pray that the information that was conveyed tonight was information that they could use. Father, I pray for the minds and the hearts of everyone that is listening in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus, oh God, that you would help Help us, Lord. Help us to see what your will and your way, your purpose and your destiny is for us. Lord, that we will we will take hold of our purpose and destiny and that we will become focused and we will become aligned with the spirit of the living God, that we may walk this walk of faith 
Father, with power and with clarity. Lord, help us to own our truth, oh God. Lord, help us to understand what the truth is, and that is the word of God. And so, Lord, as we compare or as we place our truth in your hands and you give us the truth, Father, we know that your word will wash us and cleanse us, oh God. And Lord, you will make us just like you. So what was what's what once was our truth has now been become a testimony by the washing of the word and because you know how to heal us and make us free through your word. Father, I thank you for the spirit of the living God that resides on this stream, oh God. Father, let them feel the power of you. Lord, let your spirit begin to resonate in their minds and their hearts. I release the angelic forces to do battle for us in the realm of the spirit, Lord that they will do battle with every enemy that is fighting against us. Why? Because no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. Father, I thank you that we are seated with Christ in heavenly places, oh God, that nothing shall by any means harm us. Now, Father, as we leave this place, but never your presence, Father, I ask that Lord, let the fire of the Holy Ghost, Father, let it fall in our homes from the ceiling to the floor from the windows to every door. Touch every mind, Father. Saturate us in your precious blood. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we thank you so much for everything that you have done all that you're going to do and all that you will do in the future and all that you are doing right now. And we thank you so much. We give you all the glory that our family members are covered. Our children are covered. Lord, place an impenetrable barrier of light and fire around us, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that no weapon of the enemy will be able to penetrate that barrier, oh God. And Father, we ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, that every demonic system that is working or trying to work against us, Father, by the name of Jesus and the power of the Holy Ghost, we disrupt those systems, God. We dismantle them in the name of Jesus. Father, we release our angelic forces to set and torch those altars with the fire of God. Lord, to set those altars on fire. May they burn down in every being managing them, God. May they fall down and die by fire fire. In the name of Jesus, Father, anyone attempting to access us illegally in the spiritual realm, Father, whether it's, it's anything astral projecting in the spiritual realm, Father, we get, we ask in the name of Jesus that if it be your will that you cut the silver cord in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your divine power. We thank you for your divine glory in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I thank you that a peace is resting on the, upon the people of God as they are listening to this stream tonight. Oh God, our strength and our redeemer. Father, let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, oh God, our strength and our redeemer. You are the Lord of Lord and you are the King of Kings. And we love you, Father. We give you all the glory and all the honor in Jesus powerful matchless name we pray thank god amen and amen amen everybody so i will see you all on the next video family and i'll see you all healed and whole at the top don't forget to come back on next thursday we're gonna be live doing it again i'm gonna have a topic i'm gonna be teaching uh you don't want to miss it okay so i love you all have a wonderful night and i will see you all on the next video family good night everyone shalom